Hello Pirates and welcome to another Battle Pirates weekly update. Uh, this is Ren and I hope everyone's having a good week. Uh, I'm going to start with the 1028 update notes. Today is Wednesday, July 8th and the update has just been uh, deployed to the game. It's back live now with the, the main changes. Uh, we have some content changes especially for players who care about medals that you get and medals that you lose when you're hitting and defending your base. Kick's Eye is still trying to apply some band-aids to the problem of medal dumping. Some players have been engaging in losing their medals on purpose just so they can go and hit other players and get their medals and, and kind of dump them out of the system, which has been irritating or annoying uh, some players to put it mildly I personally don't care much I like hitting bases but I don't care much about the medals there's no real value in the game you don't get anything in the game for having more medals or winning medals or keeping your medals it's really just about bragging rights anyways the few changes in base hitting so the first one is before a successful hit on a base so if you hit a base and you win and that was your third hit on that base, the player you destroyed would get a, a blue bubble because you destroyed their base, but they will not get a red bubble. Now they're getting both. So if, that, if, if, if you hit a base three times and on the third one you, you won, that player will get a blue bubble, but if they choose to pop that bubble to hit someone else or to hit you back, you will see, you only, not other players, right? But you will see a red bubble as well. That lasts for 48 hours, while the blue bubble lasts for at most 36 hours. Meaning you, you have less targets you can hit if you want to just use an out to, to drop your medals, to dump medals, lose medals on that base. If it's an out you have and whatnot. So the goal is to make that harder. Um, they have also increased the gap between players to get maximum medals. So before, by hitting a base and winning, you would score 49 medals. That was the maximum. If someone had 160 medals more than you when the battle started. Now for you to score the maximum, they need to be 300 medals above you. So you need something like 200 medals and the other player 300 medals, more than you, which is 500 in total, for you to get the maximum. So it's, a lot, it's going to be a lot slower now to win medals than it was before, due to that, to doubling, pretty much doubling the, the limit needed to score maximum. But that's not all, and I keep saying just maximum and not 49 anymore, because they've changed. The maximum now is 29 and not 49 as you can see here. So even if a player has 300 medals more than you, you're only going to score 29 medals, not 49. And if you're defending from a player that has 300 medals more than you, you're going to score the maximum defense, which is not going to be 10 anymore. Because I said previously they were going to cap how many medals you could earn for a good defense to 10. They have not kept, and I know that because two days ago my base got hit and, and it won and it got 12 medals. Uh, so that cap's not going to happen, but still it's going to be worth less than the 29 maximum you get from attacking. Okay, No impact in alliance points, no impact in stealing bounty points. It's really just a couple band-aids to slow down the medal economy and to slow down the ability players have to dump medals out of the medal economy. If you're like me and you don't care about medals much, it, it, you know, just really ignore that. Just hit bases when you want, have fun, and don't worry about the bragging that medals bring to some people. They said they're going to keep monitoring that and new changes may happen. Another change, I know some players have been living under a bubble, uh, they're informally called medal banks, people who have a ton of medals and then they kind of stay out of the PvP game by always being bubbled, by buying bubbles with money. 
So now the seven day and the 28 day bubble are no longer additive, meaning you cannot be under a 28 day bubble and then buy a seven day, which would add and give you 35, giving you the ability to be always bubbled. So now they don't add up anymore. I mean, there's always going to be at least a few days in the month where you're going to be unbubbled. Okay, I'm not going to talk about the event right now because I have a whole tab about that. The July raid that starts tomorrow, today actually, Wednesday at 3 p.m. I'll talk about it in a moment. Uh, there will be some old time limited campaigns as well. So there's one called Pieces of Eight. This one will run for the week and you can do it to earn Silverfish Blueprints. I just want to highlight the Silverfish is very old by today's standards, right? We have the Mutineer is the top skirmish hall. Before that, we had the Riot. And before the Riot, we had the Silverfish. So you're talking three holes before, two or two, my, two, two, two below the top one, which is the Mutineer. But you can get technology for the Mutineer, a bunch of tokens and stuff like that. If you have Riots or if you have Mutineers, Feel free to ignore this DLC completely. Um, Strike from Down Under, it's another TLC, and this one is giving you upgrade components for lurkers. If you're still using lurkers in your base defense, this one does not give you the lurker itself or the weapons or the build tokens. It only gives you upgrade kits and upgrade tokens. If you're past the lurkers, it's another TLC you can just ignore. In general, bug fixes. Um, they fixed some things where the new campaigns were keeping the base in repair state. And then just some general bug fixes in the game and in the HTML. There's nothing more than that. Let's move on now and talk about the raid. First, I want to start with what Kicks I calls a strategy guide. It's not so much a strategy guide as more of a bill of materials outlining what's going to be in the target. So it's a skirmish raid, as probably everyone knows by now. There is uh, an ammo carrier, so you can steal ammo from these ships. As you get close to them, they will reload the directional weapon in the mutineers, the one that points forwards. It's an explosive weapon that does a lot of damage. So as you do the target, you want to get close to these guys to reload that weapon without killing these ships. And that's why your stealing range is a bit longer than your weapon range. So you can actually get close and reload without firing at it. You want to kill these ships last. Then we have the Typhoon. Typhoon is the big one. It spills drones, it fires torpedoes, it has torpedo countermeasures, so it's nearly impossible to kill it with riots for people who want to give it a try. Keep that in mind. Uh, so that's the, that's the big gun you gotta kill. The problem is they are healed by the battle cruiser. This tiny battle cruiser you see, it's fast, it doesn't do you any damage but you gotta chase it throughout the battle area and kill it before you can come and kill the Typhoon. Otherwise, the Typhoon kind of heals almost as fast as you can damage it. So you will take a lot more damage if you don't kill the battle cruiser first. And then in some targets you'll see, or in all of them, uh, a Juggernaut Axe that's been adapted. It fires torpedoes and drones, kind of like a mini Typhoon but it does not have the, the little mortars that leave amber circles on the water. Those amber circles damage you. So try not to drive over them while they're on the water. And these are also not repaired by the battle cruiser. So you can just kill them first if they're on your way, then kill the battle cruiser, then go for the typhoons, and finally last you kill the ammo carrier. So. Targets will also have some clouds. When you see the clouds, you avoid them because they will be doing explosive damage to your ships if you get onto them. My only question, and I don't know the answer to that, is whether these explosive clouds will also damage the enemy ships because eventually I could see the battlecruiser running into them and getting killed there. 
if you chase it in the right direction. That's something I want to try when the raid starts. And uh, we'll see. So that's the raid um, quote-unquote strategy guide. Let's talk about the raid briefing next. So the raid's call Hold Fast starts today at 3 p.m. Pacific time. That is 6 p.m. Eastern time in North America a.k.a. midnight in the Netherlands. And it runs for six days until Tuesday, same time. Of course, we know it's, that's the time it starts in the Alpha Ward. I'll be playing in the Beta Ward, so for me it's going to start at 4 p.m. PDT or 7 p.m. Eastern Time. There is something here interesting. They say a raid gift. So everybody's going to get five 24 hour Everest build tokens when the raid starts, which is cool. Thank you, Kixai. Considering nobody has the shipyard time to build that new fleet, unless you're coining, that's going to come in handy. At least you can get started with some empty holes. Targets, we're going to have two new skirmish targets, level S, one new skirmish target level X, and then we have one assault target level X. Keep that in mind. This target will need the zealots, which we were using up to last month. So there's one zealot target and three mutineer targets for you to score points at the top level. And then the usual ABC sets. Contents, uh, there will be, we should be able to see that in the game now, X1 upgrade for the mutineers. Uh, already available, the new Everest Garrison Hull, the Icefall Mortar, which is the weapon for the Everest, and there's a new special called K2 Bombardment System. Um, some badges, you know, and here we can look at the numbers. So, the Merciless Mutineer X1 upgrade, you will get 35,000 survival, both explosive and concussive. You get a Damage bonus on the proto weapon ammunition, 40%. And you gain a generation aura. So now if you get your flagship to X1, you don't need to reload them from the ammo carriers only. Your own ship will be generating one ammo every two seconds. So it reloads on its own. The regular mutineers at X1 will also get 35,000 survival and the extra bonus damage, but they do not get the generation here capability. That's only the flagship. New Forsaken Mission Hole to replace the Praetorian. This is the Everest. It's a Draconian Hole. We can see here it has six armor slots, 10 weapon slots, and some of them are only standard weapons, only mortars, and four of them can also have countermeasures, so you can mix it all weapons or up to four countermeasures and six weapons. Six specials as usual, six armors, and here are the stats. It has a ton of armor when you compare it to the Praetorian. With that amount of armor and still three hour repair, that alone makes it a lot more effective, even without any sort of upgrades and stuff like that. I look at the stats, I mean, some critical chance with mortars, projectile speed, extra mortar range, reloads, splash, huge bonus on explosive and building damage, and especially wall damage, which is funny because mortars usually don't care about walls. So I really don't know why this wall damage is here. Unless you want to mix this guy up with Praetorians, and then I gotta see if the speeds would match. Some evade and some remote targeting evade. That's it. And then there's an aura here that reduces frost field effects. I'm assuming there will be new targets in FM that will have frost fields. Right now, the Legion targets don't. But I'm assuming new targets will have frost fields. It also gives survival to all five ships in the fleet. So that's the stats on the ship. Here's the mortar. It has a range of 90, but remember the ship has a bonus range of 20%. So that goes to 108 range on that ship. 
and 63,000 damage. I only I don't see a salvo count, meaning it's single salvo, so it's going to be 63,000 per projectile. With a reload time of 5, which means once you're scold, 75% bonus, you're going to be reloading every 1.25 seconds. And it gets faster with the special and the ship bonuses and whatnot. And there's a special, more building damage, more wall damage. It might replace eventually the batteries we use today. Here you can look at the badges and the achievements and stuff like that. Here are the targets. So we have a 601 target that needs to be done by the Zealots and it gives you uh, 250,000 points. Now, when you do this guy with an S target, you get 500,000 bonus, right? So you do the X and you do the S and you get that bonus. Uh, now, it's not clear to me if you need to do both Xs and the S set or just one of the Xs and the S. But anyways, we'll find out tomorrow when the raid starts. So 500,000 for just completing the S set. So as usual, you make a million, you score a million points per S set. 250k, 250k, 500k. Um, and then apparently there's an extra completion bonus here of another 500k if you do the X targets. A targets can be done by Zealots. And if you complete the A set, you're going to have 450k total. B targets can be done with the Riots. And C targets with the War Pegasus. So again, I really have no idea why they're running a campaign, a TLC, with Silverfish technology. If there are absolutely no Silverfish targets. You can see that here, right? Uh, you can also get Silverfishes, I think, in FM or in one of those beginner campaigns. So there's, I don't think there's any reason to get that. Uh, price store... Kind of like the new prizes we discussed, Everest, Mortar, Special, already upgrade kits for the Everest, build tokens for the Everest. So everybody's going to get five days of tokens for the Everest. And here you can win by playing the raid 10 more. So you can get a total of 15 tokens. I don't know if they all stack. That's the problem. If you can only keep 10, you're going to have to spend some of those five before you can uh, redeem more. Keep, keep an eye on that. Mutineer build tokens. So if your mutineers are not fully built, you can get 10 tokens and finish them for raid. Mutineer upgrade tokens, same thing. You can get 10 upgrade tokens if your upgrades are not fully done. Mine aren't. I have one ship at U2, three at U1, and the flagship's doing U2 right now. So this will be handy. I can probably get the other two or three even to U2. And then that's it, some VXP tokens, uh, Merciless Mutineer Upgrade Kits, and Mutineer Upgrade Kits. These are the top prizes. So that's it for this week. Um, I hope you guys have fun in raid and hitting each other and whatnot, playing the game. Don't stress about coining and having to grab stuff as soon as, you, as the raid starts. Take your time and talk to you next week, Pirates. Take care.